Hey guys, GhostXP here. I wanted to do an overview video of a script I had made for the Akai MPC Studio MK2. I've been working on this script for about three weeks now. I got this thing about four weeks ago. If you're watching this, you probably know that the MPC Studio MK2 doesn't have any support outside the MPC2 software. Now, FL Studio is my main DAW, so it was pretty disappointing to me that this wasn't a feature that Akai supported. It has most of the functionality of the MPC2 software with a few that it doesn't. The only thing I don't have is the note repeat and the 16 levels function. I've been looking through the FL Studio forums and it looks like they do have plans to update the FPC with note repeat along with some other features. So I'm um, really looking forward to that. Hopefully that update doesn't break this script, but uh, if it does, I'll attempt to fix it. I'm using FL Studio 21.2.3. I did try this script with FL Studio 20 and some features such as the FPC copying doesn't work in that version so keep that in mind. You may need to download an update to FL Studio if you want to use the script. To install the script just unzip the folder to the your devices folder which I'll be flashing on the screen there. This is the default location. And once you unzip it there, you may need to go to your MIDI settings and under MPC Studio MK2 Public. Uh, click on this and the MPC2 Studio MK2 should show up here and you also need to make sure that the MPC Studio MK2 public is on the same port which you can set right here uh, I have it currently set to 1 and on the output you want to set to 1 as well this is to ensure that the device can essentially send messages to itself to allow all the lights to light up so if you use a script and the lights aren't lighting up you may to need to do this step now on the subject of the lights, uh, the RGB pad lights, shout out to X Producer B who created documentation for the MPC Studio. As I mentioned before, Akai doesn't support customization outside their own software. I pretty much had given up on creating a script for the RGB pad lighting, but then I came across X Producer B on YouTube who figured out how to do it with SysX messages. Now I have no idea how he figured that out, but being able to customize the RGB lights really brought the script to life, so big shout out to him. Now he's also working on an FL Studio script for this device. Uh, by the time I had come across this video, I was like mostly done my script. So I figured I might as well just finish it since I had already put in the work. Um, my script doesn't have uh, support for step sequencing. And the reason for that is I, it's not, step sequencing isn't really something I use that much, even though it's like probably one of the main reasons some people use FL Studio. I've never really gotten into using the step sequencer. I also don't have support for mixer navigation because I kind of see this more as a creative arrangement and performance tool. So I didn't really see the value in creating navigation for the mixer because I wasn't really planning on using it. So like I basically made this thing for my own purposes for the way that I plan on using it and that's how I scripted it and I figured I might as well make this script available to other people who are looking to use this device with FL Studio since I had put in the work so uh, hopefully you can benefit from that. Now with all that said let's get into the functions of this script. So if you get the uh, port and the input and output to the same port and you load up the script the first thing you'll probably notice is this, this the default uh, FL Studio flavored lighting that I have. Um, pad A and Pad B have each their own different colors. I only programmed it up to Pad A and Pad B because that's the FPC only has two pads, so I figured I'd, I'd only program for two pads. The transport controls work as you probably expect. Play will play, hit it again, deposit, it, stop will bring it to the beginning. Play start does what you expected, it. it'll play from the start. Record will toggle recording, overdub, re toggle, overdub. Uh, the event left and right buttons, they scroll through the timeline one bar at a time. So if you're jogging, if you use a jog wheel, you know it goes from one bar. Uh, if you need to move in smaller increments, you can use this to do that. It works in the piano roll as well. Locate will create a marker. The start and end buttons here will move between markers. Main will turn on chord mode, which I'll get into later. I couldn't really figure out what else to do with main. 
so I decide that it turns on cords. TC on off will turn off metronome or toggle it. Automation read write, this will lock the FPC colors if you wanted to use uh, your FPC uh, preset and keep that between modes, which I'll get into later. Tap tempo, works as you expect, lets you tap into tempo. Mode changes between song and pattern. Quantize will quick quantize to currently select a channel. Zoom is a toggle. When you have zoom turned on, the knob will let's focus the playlist. Knob will horizontal zoom. The plus minus buttons will vertical zoom. And you'll want to toggle that off to undo that. So it's going to delete some pattern to show undo. So undo will undo. Shift undo will redo. So you can go up and down undo levels. And which brings us to track select. Track select will focus the playlist so the jog wheel will work here. The plus or minus keys will select different tracks. Uh, pad mute will mute that track. Shift pad will solo that track. If we go to program select mode, we can scroll through the uh, channels here. If you press the knob button, it'll show or hide the currently selected channel. Now this only seems to work with like plugins uh, with like these samplers here. It doesn't seem to work for some reason. Uh, shift knob button will open the playlist or sorry piano roll. If we go to browse, uh, hitting this browse will open the browse window. Let me expand that a bit more. And the knob will scroll through the menu items. So navigation on the browser is kind of weird sometimes. Uh, hitting this button, you can expand. Then you go down to say bass drum. Hit the knob button. Open new channel. Then we got the uh, bass drum. Uh, when you're in the browse mode, uh, plus or minus will navigate through the tabs. Uh, if you go to the library, uh, I couldn't figure out how to navigate between because you can see there's like two rows here, so you might have to click on it if you want to. If you're on a library tab, and once you get there, you can uh, let's say loops. This should work. Now, when you're navigating through the tabs like this, sometimes the uh, navigation breaks, like things just don't work. So, one quick fix I found is you just hit the browse and to reset it. Hit browse twice to reset, so the open and close browse, that seems to, to fix it. Also, a little tip here. I actually didn't know this until I was like experimenting with the navigation. If you go to FPC, there's like an FPC free kits you can download. Like, it'll, it'll give you like a lot more presets. You can see all these presets that you wouldn't get unless you download here. So, uh, yeah, quick little tip there. So one thing to keep in mind is like, for example, if you're in program select mode and you're using a knob and it doesn't seem to be scrolling through the channels, uh, the knob basically uses on whatever window you currently have active. So one thing you can do is just hit program select again, it'll focus the uh, channel. Same thing goes with the track select. If I open the FPC here and I hit sample select, that'll change the knob so that it could scroll through presets. So use that to scroll through the presets. So one thing to keep in mind is that only seems to work with FL Suite plugins. Some third-party plugins, they have their own sort of way of navigating through presets, so it unfortunately wouldn't work with those ones. If I go back to track select, the sample start and sample end will create a start point and end point for selection. So if I hit start there, move a little bit, and hit again, then it'll create a point that will sample start to reset that and that brings us to the pad section here so note repeat doesn't oh yeah it does do something <laughs> so I did mention there's no note repeat feature I forgot that I did sort of have a workaround so if you hit the note repeat button it'll toggle it on and that turns the knob into basically a sort of impromptu note repeat so 
can kind of use that to repeat notes. It'll repeat the last path you hit, so if I hit a different one. That's kind of a neat feature, I guess. Uh, because I had to figure out a way to like turn off the last note, uh, it will every second uh, knob turn will just basically shut the note off. So only every second turn of the knob will trigger a note. The reason I did that because if I didn't do it that way, like it would like create a bunch of notes that don't turn off, and you have like a bunch of overlapping notes. It's a bit of a mess. Touch strip doesn't do anything. I couldn't figure out what feature to put it on, but this does work as a general modulation wheel that you can link to whatever knob you want. Uh, so that brings us to the pad banks here. So as I mentioned before, there's pad A and pad B. These are the just default colors that I set to it. One thing you want to keep in mind is uh, I set this up so that it works with the default preset. So whenever you open up uh, at PC, usually Gretsch is the first, uh, first preset that opens. So I uh, set it up so all these notes correspond with that first preset. Now if you open up this pad menu here uh, and you go down to layouts, there's a checkbox here that says use current layout when changing presets. I think this is off by default, but if you turn that on uh, and you scroll through uh, presets, oh, right. oh yeah, I forgot to mention, um, because the knob has many features, uh, if if you're trying to use it for something that's not working the, same, the way you expect it, you might need to remember to turn off a toggle, like for example, I had note repeat turned on, and then I tried to change a preset, but I forgot to turn it off. So I have sample select, so I'm going to a different preset. So I'm gonna turn off, use current layer when changing presets. So if I change a preset, you might notice that some pads no longer work. Because unless you have this current use current layout when changing presets, uh, some notes just won't work. Uh, one workaround you can do is if you click over here on map notes for entire bank, you can basically just start from the, from the bottom left pad, and so now it'll be mapped to all the current presets. Or a much easier way to do it is if you hold Shift and copy. This will copy the colors and the notes for the current preset. So this is like one of the features that I'm most proud of because this basically lets you turn FPC into like an interface to customize the colors and notes for the, the pad here. So I just had to reset FL Studio for a second. The FPC copying wasn't working quite as expected for some reason. Uh, looking through the script, I couldn't quite figure out why, but Resetting FL Studio seemed to fix the issue, so anyways, uh, we're back at it. So, uh, as I was mentioning, if you hit Shift Copy, this will copy all the FPC colors and also their notes to the current uh, FPC pad bank. Now, if I go to pad bank B, I set this color here to purple, so if I go to pad B, you can see that pad B also color, uh, copies the colors there. You can also use this to basically customize your, your MPC studio to whatever notes and colors that you need it to be. So for example, if I hit this one here, I change a note to say an E5, and I'll hit shift copy. Let's open up uh, FL keys here. You can see the note change if I go back and change it again. Shift copy. You can see that the note changed. So while we're on FL keys here, let me open the piano roll. If I hit 16 levels, this will change to the modes. Currently there are three modes. There's FPC mode, which is the mode that, we're, that we were just on. It's also the default mode that loads up. If I hit 16 levels again, it'll open up chromatic mode. Uh, pad banks will change different octaves. If I hit shift 16 levels, this basically turns it, the MPC into like note editing mode. 
that'll change what the knob does here. So if, if I turn the knob, that'll change the key. Uh, these plus or minus will change the octaves. Now if I hit shift 16 levels to turn that off and hit it again to change the notes mode, we are now in notes mode and by default it is currently set to the major scale. If I hit shift 16 levels again, you can see the, uh, the octave and the key buttons work as expected. If you hit the main button, oh that was a bit loud, I'm going to turn this down. <laughs> So we are now in co chord mode. So when we're in uh, notes editing mode and also when the chords are on, uh, that changes what the knobs and the plus and minus keys do. So if I hit the plus, that'll add extensions to the chord. So by default, we're in triads, then it'll add a seventh, then a ninth, then an eleventh, and that's as far as I said it. The knob will change the voicing of the chord. So you can see the third and fifth go up an octave. Uh, if you if I go up more, it doesn't do anything because the other voicings are intended for more, more extensions. So here we have a seventh chord where the seven goes up an octave. If I go again, the seventh is now up an octave. If I do it again, the fifth comes back down an octave to get a nice open voicing. If I hit the extension again, I get that ninth back in. And I go up another voicing, it will bring up the ninth an octave. Then the eleventh. I mean, it'll take a long time to go through all of them, but basically just experiment with the knob to change the voicing. Bring it back down to a triad. You can also do negative voicing, so if you go back down, the fifth and third will go down an octave. So if I add extension. So the when you're going into negative values, it only goes down about three values because I figured there wasn't much use in going down more than that because then you bring the C down an octave and then you're just down an octave, which I didn't see the usefulness in that. Uh, when we're in notes editing mode, these two event bu buttons will change the mode. So we currently we're starting in major. If we go up, we are now in Dorian mode. The next one is, I think this is Phrygian. Yeah, Phrygian. Then Lydian, I think. Mixolydian. Aeolian or natural minor. Locrian. Then we're back in major. So yeah, what else do I have here? The copy does what you probably expect. So if I hit this, copy will copy it and if I hit again it'll paste and I think that's got everything covered so uh, yeah I hope you guys appreciate all the work I did and uh, the links will be in the description to download it uh, I'll be uploading this to the FL Studio forums if there's any updates to this script I'll likely post it there I think I'll probably post this into like a Google Docs folder so if there is an update and you click on this link in a few some future date you'll see the latest version there so anyways uh thanks for watching hope you guys enjoy the script uh yeah